Today we're looking at text to self connections using the Nunth of the Living Dead by David Sedaris. There's a walnut tree in the side yard, and every year Hugh collects the fruit and lays it on the attic floor to dry. Shortly thereafter, the mice come in. I don't know how they climb the stairs, but they do, and the first thing on their list is to take Hugh's walnuts. They're much too big to be carried by mouth, so instead they roll them across the floor, pushing them toward the nests they've built in the tight spaces between the walls and the eaves. Once there, they discover that the walnuts won't fit, and while I find this to be comic, Hugh thinks differently and sets the attic with traps. Sometimes, when the rolling gets on my nerves, I'll turn on the attic light and make like I'm coming up the steps. This quiets them for a while, but on nights like today, the trick didn't work. The noise kept up and sounded like something being dragged rather than rolled. A shingle? A heavy piece of toast? Again, I turned on the attic light, and when the noise continued, I went upstairs and found a mouse, caught in one of the traps Hugh had set. The steel bar had come down on its back, and he was pushing himself in a tight circle, not in a death row, but with a spirit of determination, an effort to work within a new set of boundaries. I can live with this he seemed to be saying, really, just give me a chance. I couldn't leave him that way, so I scooted the trap mouse into a cardboard box and carried him down onto the front porch. The fresh air, I figured, would do him some good, and once released, he could run down the stairs and into the yard, free from the house that now held such bitter memories. I should have lifted the bar with my fingers, but instead, worried that he might try to bite me, I held the trap down with my foot and attempted to pry it open with the end of a metal ruler which was stupid. No sooner had the bar been raised than it snapped back, this time on the mouse's neck. The next three attempts were equally punishing, and finally freed, he staggered onto the doormat, every imaginable bone broken in at least four different places. Anyone could see that he was not going to get any better. Not even a vet could have fixed this mouse, and so, put him out of his misery, I decided to drown him. The first step for me is the most difficult, for going into the cellar to get the bucket. This involved leaving the well-lit porch, walking around the side of the house, and entering what is surely the bleakest and most terrifying hole in all of Europe. Low ceilings, stone walls, and a dirt floor stamped with paw prints. I never go in without announcing myself. Ha! I yell. Ha! It's the sound my father makes when entering his tool shed, the cry of cowboys as they round up doggies, and it suggests a certain degree of authority. Snakes, bats, weasels, it's time to head up and move on out. When retrieving the bucket, I carried a flashlight in each hand, holding them low like pistols. I kicked in the door, hi -yah, hi -yah! grabbed what I was looking for, and ran. I was back on the porch in less than a minute, but it took much longer for my hands to stop shaking. Text to self connections. Again, um, to model this, I'm going to need to look at my life, and you're welcome to laugh at me as much as you'd like. I hope you like um, The Newt of the Living Dead. It is my favorite David Sedaris essay. Um, he's very funny, it's all satire. I highly suggest you go and read it, it's very fun. Um, let's look at the left hand column. These are quotes from the text that I have summarized for us. Okay, so number one, the author finds a trapped mouse in the attic and attempts to free it without being bitten. He uses a ruler, he walks us through the steps of this. Two, Sedaris wants to free the mouse and says it really isn't doing anything wrong, but in the end, he maims the mouse and decides it has to be drowned. And finally, Mr. Sedaris is very frightened of his cellar's inhabitants. He mentions some paw prints and some sort of small animal lives down there and he yells to make them run away. Okay, in my life, Bless me, you may laugh as much as you want. I am terrified of mice. Um, I've been had some very unfortunate encounters with them before, and I don't like them. Uh, I'm not going to climb on top of a chair, but I have been known to jump up and down and shriek or run away. My kid brother has been called on a number of occasions in the middle of the night to come get a gun and shoot mice, maybe. Second, while driving down I-25 south, I once stopped to help a rabbit out of a construction zone. Um, it was four lanes of traffic, there was a cement barrier on one side, the rabbit was stuck between the cement barrier, and when I jumped out to help the rabbit, it, terrified, ran into traffic and did not <coughs> live, <clears throat> unfortunately. Finally, um, my dogs really like to walk in the tall grass in this, by the stream and the greenway in our neighborhood. 
Um, and I really don't want to meet the snakes that live down there, so I tend to run along while being pulled by two dogs yelling, Hey, hey snake! Run, run away snake! Goodbye snake! Um, when I'm drugged into this grass. Okay, so we're making connections. First, if we've got um, Mr. Sedaris finds this trap mouse, his goal is to free it without getting bitten. I'm terrified of mice and I will run away. The connection I have made is that humans are sometimes afraid of wild animals' reactions. He wasn't afraid of the mouse, he was afraid of being bitten by the mouse. I am afraid of mice because I'm afraid they're going to run across my bare feet. <sighs> okay, next, Sedaris wants to free the mouse, but unfortunately he ends up basically killing it. That's going to be the end. Um, and I wanted to help a rabbit out of traffic, and I definitely killed it. Therefore, um, we as humans see situations where animals are limited by things that humans have made, constructed, created. And we want to try to help, but sometimes we don't always help the way we want to. We don't succeed. Okay, finally, um, Dr. Mr. Sedaris excuse me, is frightened of the animals that live in his cellar. Um, and he yells to make them run away and I don't want to encounter any poisonous snakes while walking my dogs, and so I yell to make noise to make the snakes go away. Um, so we, we in Colorado, we hear things about hiking. Um, humans have learned, doo, 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 um, that animals run away with loud noises. And we may or may not make a fool of ourselves as we are doing this. In your own life, think about memories, experiences, things you've done in your life that you can connect to a story. Ever been afraid of the dark? Mr. Sedaris says that. Ever gotten to a point when you feel like you need to deal with something because you've made this problem, like snapping a mouse repeatedly with a mouse trap, and you feel like you need to fix it, like drowning a mouse? Those would be connections you could make in a self-to-text connection. Questions? We welcome them. Ms. Martin and Ms. Venable are here for your assistance. Please let us know how we can help.